Hello and welcome back. So this video is for class 12th and we are going to start with uh, the part 2 of our uh, syllabus. Okay and today we start with chapter number 9 that is ray optics. Uh, now of course in class 10th uh, we had studied uh, one chapter was there that was uh, light reflection and refraction. So you can think of this chapter as an uh, as a continuation of that. Okay, so here we are going to see uh, the basic properties of light. Now, uh, if you see the textbook, so it will include uh, the initial part will be reflection and next part will be uh, refraction. But now for this year, CBC has deleted some of the topics. So the first topic that is there, which is reflection, that has been deleted for this year's syllabus. So if you uh, look at your textbook, uh, the topics of 9.1 and 9.2 are completely out of the syllabus. So we are going to start with 9.3 which is refraction. Uh, now when you are going to look at the class notes that you are having, uh, you will see all the questions pertaining to the first part uh, reflection. Okay. Uh, so no need to write them in your classwork note as I say uh, because they are not uh, the part of the syllabus this year. Right? You can start uh, directly with the refraction part. Okay. So we will start with refraction. Now I am sure you remember what is refraction. Refraction is uh, the bending of light or the change in direction of light when it passes from one medium to another. Okay, now I hope you remember all these topics but once again let us do a very quick revision of it. So here we will imagine a glass slab, right? Uh, this is a ray of light that is coming from air and when it enters uh, from air it enters the glass slab it is going to have a change in its direction. So this ray of light will now bend like this. Right, and of course, uh, from glass when it comes to air, again it is going to bend. Right, so this is what we know about refraction. This phenomena we call as refraction. To measure the angles, what we do, we draw the uh, normal over here, okay, the perpendicular, uh, and then we can measure something called as the refractive index. Now, again, uh, I am not going to explain this entire topic completely because we have already seen this in 10th class. So, this is what we have seen that. The angle between incident ray and normal is called as I, angle of incidence. Angle between refracted ray and normal is called as R, angle of refraction. And we can measure something called as refractive index, which is ratio of sine of I to the sine of R. Refractive index is denoted by small n. And we will always write it like this. Suppose the air medium is 1 and the glass medium is 2. So we will write it as n. 2, 1. That is refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 which will be equal to sine of i upon sine of r. Okay, now again I hope this formula you are remembering. Sine of i that is sine of angle of incidence divided by sine of angle of refraction is called as refractive index. Refractive index does not have any unit. Uh, of course, we can write it in terms of their velocities that the velocity of light in the first medium if it is v1 and velocity of light in medium 2 is v2 then we can write refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 will be equal to v1 upon v2 so velocity of light in first medium divided by velocity of light in second medium of course n21 means a refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium Always refractive index uh, is a relative concept. That means uh, whenever you write refractive index it will be of one medium with respect to another. Correct? Uh, because uh, refraction takes place when there is a change in the medium taking place. Right? Uh, also just uh, for uh, refraction uh, velocity of light changes that is why the direction changes. So light would be moving with a uh, faster velocity in air when it enters the glass medium the velocity will decrease that is why we get this change in direction similarly you can write therefore uh, refractive index of first medium with respect to second medium will be equal to v2 upon v1 correct or you can say therefore n21 is equal to 1 upon n12 correct all these are concepts that we have already seen in 10th class right uh, I hope now there is no more confusion in this. So this is the concept of refractive index. Next we will talk about absolute refractive index. Now what is absolute refractive index? 
So uh, what we have seen that if we write refractive index like this n21 means refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium. Now these two medium could be anything means light could be passing from air into glass or it can be passing from air into water or it can go from water into glass. Also we can have any combination of media, right? But suppose we have uh, we are considering a case where the first medium that is from where the light is actually coming through. If that first medium is air or a vacuum, then we simply write it like this N two. Okay, so we will not put another symbol there. So what will uh, what will N two mean? N two will mean that this N two is the absolute refractive index of the medium number two. So if light is coming from air and then it is going into glass for example okay then you will simply write ng okay so ng will be refractive index of glass with respect to air which will be simply called as the absolute refractive index okay so understand so whenever we are saying absolute refractive index we are considering the first medium is nothing but air or vacuum so let us say absolute refractive index of second medium we will write it as n2 is equal to what will be the formula v1 upon v2 but v1 means light is passing in air which is nothing but the velocity of light in air which is uh, denoted by c denot, uh, divided by v2 velocity of light in that particular medium correct right? so this is also a formula that you can use so uh, the absolute refractive index of any uh, medium can be given as uh, velocity of light in air divided by velocity of light in that medium Uh, so sometimes this kind of question will be asked in the exam that light is uh, the absolute refractive index of glass is let us say one point five okay uh, and so find out how much is the velocity of light in glass so we will say therefore one point five will be three into ten to the power eight divided by v two that is velocity in glass so therefore you will get v two is equal to three into ten uh, to the power eight divided by one point five which will be two into ten to the power eight meter per second. so you can understand uh, you will get answer that in glass the velocity of light will be 2 into 10 to the power 8 okay again uh, the same concept we had seen in 10th class as well so that is the concept of refractive index and absolute refractive index now let us derive one more relation okay now consider there are uh, three media uh, medium number 1 2 and 3 we are going to find uh, a formula for to relate all these three medium with each other So first, let us write uh, n one two refractive index of medium one with respect to medium two. That will be equal to v one, sorry, v two upon v one. Correct. So refractive index of first medium with respect to second medium will be uh, velocity of light in second medium divided by velocity in the first medium. Let us call this equation number one. Okay. Then uh, n three two. That is refractive index of third medium with respect to second medium. How much that would be? That would be equal to v two upon v three. Let us call that as the second equation. Now divide equation two by equation one. We will get therefore n three two upon n one two is equal to. So it will be uh, v two by v three divided by v two by V1, so this V2, V2 gets cancelled. This V1 goes up, so we we'll get V1 by V3. Correct. So what we get? N32 by N12 is V1 by V3. But V1 by V3 will be nothing but N31. That is the refractive index of third medium with respect to the first medium. So we get therefore N31 is equal to N32 divided by N12. So such kind of relation also you can. Fine. Okay, so three medium can be related to each other like this. Uh, there is uh, one more way that you can write it. Okay, uh, we can. Let us say we just want to write it in terms of the uh, absolute refractive indices. So you can actually write n two one will be equal to n two that is absolute refractive index of second medium upon n one absolute refractive index of the first medium. Okay, so in some of the later formulae we are going to use this as well. This. But more or less the same kind of explanation you can write for this formula as well. Next, we will discuss the concept of total internal refl reflection (TIR). Okay. Again, I, I, I hope you remember when we studied rainbow formation. That time we spoke about total internal reflection. Okay. Uh, so here is the phenomena. 
So here we have a dense medium, a glass medium, from which a ray of light will be passing to a rare medium that is air. Remember, TIR will only take place when light will move from a denser medium to a rarer medium. Okay. So, uh, so here is a normal that we have drawn. So here is our ray of light that is the incident ray. What will happen is when it goes from glass to air, it is going to get refracted. But here it is moving from a dense medium into a rare medium. And we know that whenever light goes from dense medium to rare medium, it will move away from the normal. So the ray of light will go something like this. Correct. So if this is the angle of incidence, this will be angle of uh, refraction. Now what has happened is, uh, you can see that when you are going from denser medium to rarer medium, the angle of refraction will be larger than angle of incidence, right? So for example, if uh, 30 degrees is the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction might be 40 degrees. Or if the angle of incidence is 40 degrees, the angle of refraction will be 50 degrees, correct? So we are going to see an increase in the angle of refraction, correct? So what you can do now? We can go on increasing the angle of incidence, right? At one point, we will notice that at a certain angle of incidence, correct, the angle of refraction will be such that it will actually go 90 degrees like this, correct? So it will actually move uh, grazing the, uh, the, the top surface of the glass slab. So here we are going to get R is equal to 90 degrees, correct? When this has taken place, this angle will be called as IC, that is the critical angle. Okay, now what happens at critical angle? Critical angle is that angle of incidence for which angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Obviously, it will only happen when the light is passing from denser to rarer medium. Uh, it will not happen the other way around. If you are moving from a rare medium to denser medium, you will not get the critical angle. Fine. So we get the critical angle that is called as IC. Now, if the ray of light, the, the incident angle is larger than critical angle, then what happens is any ray of light that is uh, higher than IC, higher than the critical angle, that will get reflected inside. Okay. So it will not move outside because already it has reached the maximum angle of refraction which is 90. Usse jada, it is going to get reflected. So any ray of light that passes after this point that will get reflected internally and that, we, that uh, phenomena we call as TIR, total internal reflection. Correct? So this is the phenomena and we get IC that is the critical angle. Obviously you can get uh, refractive index of second with respect to first medium will be equal to sine of the critical angle. So that was the concept of total internal reflection. Okay. Uh, now let us talk about some of the applications of total internal reflection. Uh, the first application uh, that we see um, in uh, our city, we see it many times and that is a mirage formation. What is mirage formation? Uh, if you look at, uh, if you are on the road, on the highway, okay, uh, and uh, if a uh, lot of sun is there, if you look very far away, it looks like some water has fallen down, right? And uh, if a car is passing by, we are actually able to see a reflection of that car and it looks like the reflection is shimmering, correct? Uh, and of course, when we go there, there is no water actually. This effect is actually the, uh, called as the mirage effect, okay? Mirage effect takes place due to total internal reflection, right? What happens is the road becomes very hot. Uh, because the road has become hot, the air over the road, that also becomes hot, right? So we get two layers, we get hot air and we get a little bit colder air. So hot air that will have a lower density that is a rarer medium, a colder air that will have a little bit higher density, denser medium. So any light that is coming from denser to rarer medium that will get internally reflected and that reflected light when you see, you actually see the mirage, correct? So that is uh, one application of uh, total internal reflection. Second one, uh, this TIR, it affects the diamonds, correct? Now when you look at diamonds, we see lot of light coming out of the diamonds. Basically they are reflecting the light and that is why they look so shiny. Now how they are made to look shiny actually depends upon the craftsman, the one who is actually uh, shaping the diamond. So if you look at the, the surface of the diamond, there are many uh, cuts are made over there. 
the cuts are specifically made so that when light enters the diamond it will get reflected internally and that light when it comes out the diamond uh, seems like it is shining so that is another application of uh, tir okay now third uh, this question sometimes is asked in the exam uh, tir is used for uh, special prisms correct these special prisms can actually invert the light let us see how so we can have such kind of prisms uh, which are making use of the uh, tir phenomena so uh, if the object is like this correct the light coming from the object it comes here and it gets reflected internally since it is more than the critical angle so you can see the object is like this the the, the image that is formed it is actually uh, laterally displaced in this manner correct uh, such kind of uh, prisms uh, they are used in telescopes so when you are looking at an object uh, actually the image is inverted correct so uh, but when you are looking through the eyepiece it actually looks erect because there is a, a prism that is fitted inside like this or we can have something like this which will invert the image so if the image is in this manner the light goes in this manner okay gets reflected internally two times on this surface it gets reflected and again it will get reflected on the other surface and you get an inverted image correct so such uh, special prisms are there which uh, which will make use of this phenomenon of tir now apart from this one of the most extensive and the best uses of tir we make uh, in making something called as the optical fibers uh, optical fibers uh, they are basically made up of a transparent material okay uh, so basically have two kind of uh, materials in there the inside of the core that is having the uh, higher density and then there is a, uh, a covering a coating uh, around it that is having the lower density correct and they are uh, they can be very very long just like wires correct and what they do uh, let us say uh, you can convert any signal into the light form okay and when that light form enters this medium correct it is made to enter at an angle that is higher than its critical angle and every time that there is a reflection the angle is always higher than the critical so what happens is the ray of light that has gone inside keeps getting uh, reflected internally and this can go on and on so even if you have let us say 100 meter long optical fiber that uh, light signal can actually go by with these internal reflections and as i said this we are using in our uh, for our internet signals correct you always talk of an optical fiber network so the internet connection the broadband connection that we are having in our house that is actually sent by making use of these optical fibers so communication actually has become much easier for us because tir could be utilized in these optical fibers so that was the concept of uh, refraction and total internal reflection okay make sure that you have understood those applications very well now we are going to uh, going to move to the next part of this chapter this next part we are going to see refraction by spherical surfaces now of course you know very well what we mean by spherical surfaces that is nothing but the lenses so of course uh, you know if we make a shape like this this is a convex lens if you make a shape like this this is a concave lens right so now uh, what we are going to do we are going to see formulae for these lenses now of course in class 10 we had seen the lens formula and the mirror formula also uh, of course we will derive that formula but before that we are going to find the general formula for refraction whenever refraction will take place by uh, any kind of spherical surface okay so let us see so we are going to make a spherical surface like this okay imagine this is a spherical surface this entire thing this is our spherical surface right so all this part this is not necessarily uh, a convex lens like you always imagine okay this entire part that is the uh, convex surface this here is the convex part right here let us make our principle let us call this point as m here we will keep our object let us call it uh, at the point o right now what will happen the ray of light will come from here okay and from here it will get refracted let us say the ray of light falls here so this is where we are going to get our image let us call that point as i so any kind of uh, spherical surface actually forms images just like this uh, here we have considered a point size object so point size object at o it will form an image at the point i okay uh, if we draw a normal over here we can consider that this will be the 
center of curvature for this uh, spherical surface right now we have a relation uh, for this uh, for this image that has been formed now here i am not going to go with the derivation okay in the notes you will find the derivation if you want uh, here we will simply write the formula okay a very very simple formula and this formula is applicable for all kinds of spherical surfaces whether they are convex like this or they are concave okay so what is the formula uh, of course before we write the formula uh, the refractive index of this medium that will be taken as n1 refractive index of the other medium that will be taken as n2 okay and the formula we get is n2 divided by what is the image distance m i plus n1 divided by what is the object distance o m is equal to n2 minus n1 divided by uh, the radius of curvature that is this distance that is cm okay that is nothing but r so n2 minus n1 upon r so this is the formula you are going to remember once again n2 that is where the image is getting formed okay so refractive index of where the image is formed divided by the image distance plus n1 that is the refractive index of the uh, first medium from where the light is originating okay the incident light is coming from n1 divided by the object where the object is placed is equal to n2 minus n1 the difference between the indices divided by the radius of curvature of that uh, particular spherical surface now this formula you are going to remember because we are going to use this to derive another very important formula and that is the lens makers formula so let us see that derivation now now let us derive the lens makers formula now to understand that formula you have to understand these diagrams let us see the first one so here you see a convex lens correct now what is happening here the object is placed at the point o correct the light refracts and it forms an image at point i correct so this much part is very simple right a point image forms a uh, sorry a point object will form a point image at the point i now to understand lens makers formula we can consider that this lens is actually made up of two refracting surfaces the first surface is this a b c correct that is the first surface that we are showing in this diagram over here the center one and the other surface is a b c which we are showing in the last diagram getting the idea because refraction is taking place two times first it is taking place on the surface a b c which is shown in this diagram and then it is taking place on the surface a b c which we are showing in the third diagram correct now what is happening in the first case when the light refracts from the first surface so light goes from o correct and from the surface a b c it gets refracted and it refracts and it will reach a point i1 i1 is not seen in this diagram here because the light already got refracted by the second surface okay so by the first surface the image is actually formed at i1 fine then what happens is this image i1 will act as a virtual object for the second surface a b c i will repeat once again the first surface okay a b c formed a uh, formed an image at i1 this image is now becoming an object for what for the second surface a b c and now this uh, this image i1 will actually act as object and now final image we get at the point i okay so that is the meaning of these three diagrams uh, and of course again we are going to assume outside the medium here will be n1 and the material of that uh, lens that will be made up of uh, refractive index n2 okay so with that now let us start with our derivation okay so now let us start with our derivation so as i said before we are the refractive index will be n1 inside the refractive index will be n2 the let us make it on these diagrams also n1 n2 here n2 and outside here will be n1 correct uh, outside you will be having air now we are going to use that previous formula <coughs> that we found for all spherical surfaces and that formula first we put for the surface abc and then we will try it for surface adc so let us begin so for this surface abc when you use the formula you will get for the surface abc n2 upon how much is the image distance bi1 
एन टू अपॉन पी आई वन प्लस एन वन प्लस एन वन अपॉन हाउ मच इज ए डिस्टेंस ओ बी ओ बी इज इक्वल टू एन टू माइनस एन वन अपॉन आर वन नाउ आर वन विल बी द रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर ऑफ दिस फर्स्ट सर्विस ए बी सी करेक्ट दैट इज आर वन लेट अस कॉल दिस एज आवर इक्वेशन नंबर वन ओके सो आई थिंक दिस वन इज वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड now we will do the same uh, formula for this third diagram correct now see what is happening in the third uh, diagram for adc the object is actually virtual correct this uh, object that is i1 so this is actually a virtual object that we are getting for this uh, for this surface so now using the same one now we are going to take the second surface which is second surface n1 so n1 upon and n1 how much is the distance d i so n1 upon Di, <coughs> then which is the previous surface from where the image is actually coming? That is n two. So n two upon. Now since it is a virtual object, correct? Because uh, actually an image was formed which was acting like the object. So it is either it is actually against the direction of incoming light. So this distance b i one will actually be minus. That is negative. So we will get n one upon d one. एन वन अपॉन डी आई माइनस एन टू अपॉन डी आई वन ओके इक्वल टू दिस विल बी सेम एन टू माइनस एन वन अपॉन नाउ विल टेक इट एज आर टू दैट इज द रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर ऑफ द सेकेंड सर्फेस एंड दिस विल कॉल एज इक्वेशन नंबर सेकेंड नाउ वी हैव अज्यूम दैट दिस लेंस इज अ थिन लेंस ओके सो बिकॉज इट इज अ थिन लेंस यू कैन एक्चुअली से That B and D are very very close to each other. Okay, and in uh, normal scenarios, that is the case. Correct. So you can say that B and D are so close to each other that this term, that is D I one. Okay, D I one. You can say it is almost equal to B I one. Okay. Well, and why we can say that? We can say that because this lens is a very thin lens. So equation two. Can be written as n1 upon d i minus n2 upon b i1. Okay, equal to n2 minus n1 upon r2. Okay, now this will become equation number three. <coughs> now, if you add equation one and equation three, what you will see n1 upon o b. Uh, sorry, n2 upon b i1 and uh, minus n2 upon b i1. This will get cancelled out, right? And you will get the equation now. N one into one upon O B plus one upon B I equal to on this side you will get N two minus N one in bracket one upon R one plus one upon R two. Okay. So now uh, I am going to erase this. Okay. I hope uh, you have understood how we have derived. these equations from these diagrams okay now next what we are we are going to see what kind of changes we can make in this particular equation so this is the previous equation that we had got now what you will notice here uh, this di uh, this basically represents the image distance that is v and ob this represents the object distance correct so now we can assume that the object is very very far away <coughs> right uh, that is the object is at infinity so if the object comes to infinity this ob this will get represented by uh, replaced by infinity and one by infinity will be zero so if the object is at infinity okay it is very far away and of course i hope you remember in terms of lenses and all infinity basically signifies a very large distance so if object is at infinity then we can say ob equal to infinity and therefore one by ob is approximately equal to zero then this equation can be written as n1 upon di equal to n2 minus n1 so multiplied by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 okay so i hope now uh, it is clear how we arrived at this particular equation now what is di di is the image distance but i'm sure you remember that if object is at infinity image is formed at the focal length so if image is formed at focal length then basically di will represent nothing but the focal length so this equation can be written as n1 upon f 
okay in the focal length which is equal to n2 minus n1 and in bracket now we will write it like this 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 why we are replacing r2 by minus is because for the second surface uh, the radius comes towards the left hand side so by the uh, Cartesian sign convention the uh, radius of the second surface will be negative therefore this r2 will write as minus okay so now we get the equation n1 by f equals n2 minus n1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 again this can be written as so we will write this equation as 1 by f equal to n2 minus n1 divided by n1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 <coughs> n2 minus n1 minus n1 minus n1 so this will get n21 minus 1 multiplied by 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 and this is 1 by f so this equation of course i hope you know how we got n21 n2 by n1 is nothing but n21 see always uh, already we derived when you did the further absolute refractive indices so this equation 1 by f equal to n21 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is called as the lens makers formula now this is very very important correct in the exam this derivation could be asked so make sure that you have understood this uh, particular formula very properly okay and uh, this formula uh, it is applicable for all types of lenses whether convex or concave in concave only what would happen in place of r1 r1 will become negative and r2 will become positive that is the only uh, change we'll have to make here otherwise the other formula would remain the same of course r1 comes negative r2 comes positive so uh, focal length will also be negative in the case of concave lens okay so i hope you have understood this particular formula now make sure to write it in your notebook uh, and as i have already told you some of the topics which are deleted uh, make sure that you are not repeating them in your notebook